This pocket here is set up to be three and a half inches. Put a ball on the spot for each shot. I have nine dots right here representing nine cue ball locations, which essentially present the shot with nine different angles. I shot each shot with a 15 inside using an aim line and a sight line that is visually repeatable, knowable, repeatable. The visuals subsequently took me to a known center cue ball, a line that represents one tick for pocketing that ball. So I essentially uh, engaged in zero guesswork. I worked with known perceptions and a known center cue ball. Now this lesson that I'm going to present here is totally unrehearsed so whatever happens happens because I'm not going to do it again. Um, I've got a checkerboard here and I'm just going to create a few little uh, variables, manipulatives, for explaining a point. Um, how long has pool been around? I've got a whiskey bottle here, or a, a bourbon bottle. I better get that correct. It's the difference between whiskey and bourbon. Uh, so uh, I need to be, I need to make sure I have that right. But anyway, this, this bottle has uh, 1792 on it. Well, the significance of that date is that pool has been around in some form for a couple of hundred years. So 1792 gets us a little bit close. So what have people been doing for a couple of hundred years? Taking their sticks and getting on a rectangular surface and knocking some balls around. I'm sure that when the game was first played, they might have them a little drink, knock the balls around, not paying too much to uh, where their eyes go, or how they hold the cue, or how they stroke the cue, they just had a good time. But as with anything of this nature, knowledge is going to be uh, introduced into the activity over time. Now, what was probably one of the first big knowledge aspects of the game to, inert, to emerge uh, from a perceptual point of view. Well, let's say that this is the uh, cue ball, and one of the big things that probably emerged first perceptually was to put your nose behind the center of the cue ball. That way you can, uh, that way you can aim or align 
an objective center to something that would be objective on the object ball. Perhaps the center or the quarter or the edge. You know, over time we've learned about the ghost ball, the contact points. Those things can best be taught. They are taught optimally with the nose behind the center of the cue ball. So that's how far we've come, folks. We, we have learned in this game, as sophisticated as we are, and as much as we love our science and our math, what have we learned in 200 years? Put your nose. Now when I say nose, that would be synonymous with somebody's vision center. But you know, if you're standing five or six feet behind the ball, since our vision triangulates at that distance when looking at uh, the cue ball, it's typically your nose that would be behind center cue ball. So that's what we've learned. We, we really hold on to that knowledge. Oh, that's important. That's important. Because, why is it so important? Because from that perspective, experts can emerge and explain the game. They can explain it. It can be taught. It can be shown to others. Because I promise you, my wife's not a pool player, but with this nose behind the center concept, she could... She, with a couple of days of training, just a little bit of training, she wouldn't even have to shoot a shot. She could teach people how to uh, engage in the various systems, whether it be ghost ball, contact points, or fractions. It'd take a little work, but it's, it's, it's very doable that she could teach those systems and never shoot a shot because the concept is so easy. So we've come a long way. We've come a long way with our 200 years of study in this game. And, you know, there's some people that just absolutely have to have it this way. I'm going to, I think I'm going to start referring to those people as nosers. They're nosers. You know, an individual decades ago, Hal Hool was thirsty for knowledge. He knew, he understood very clearly that the nose behind center approaches resulted in uh, guesswork alignments where, whereby you shoot a million balls to make the shot. So he, he, ventured, he ventured away from the center with his nose. He would turn his nose. He would get his eyes away from center. And you know what? During his exploration of a whole new perceptual world concerning looking at cue balls and object balls on a table, he was in a whole new perceptual domain. So while he was there, he looked for things that could be repeatable. Because when you're working with two spheres, when you're working with two spheres, you do have objectivity. You've got a center, you've got a couple of edges, you have a couple of edges here, you have a center, and you have a couple of quarters. So, Hal Hool was thirsty for aiming knowledge. He knew that he couldn't get his knowledge from behind the center of the cue ball, not the knowledge that he wanted. He wanted to know how to really aim, how to really line up, so that, you could, so that he could take advantage of the rectangular geometric surface that just so happens to be two by one with pockets located in specific locations at the corners. Essentially the sides are corner locations. So, how developed center edge Amy? And Let's, let's look at the variables that he played with. What, what do you think he started off with first? I've already given you the answer to that. He started off with perception. We're going to let this beige disc right here represent perception. He had to study perception. Could there be anybody out there that thought that a pioneer trying to discover new things about the game would start off with the would start off with math 
first as represented by this red disk, it would be an impossibility to start off math and say, oh, I think I'm just going to create a new system, centered edge aiming, and I'm just going to work some math problems, and there you go, that's it, and then we'll apply the perception to it. That's not how it worked, folks. Hal started off with perception. He didn't care about the math aspect of it. Why? Because pool is a visual game driven by one's visual intelligence whereby one's physicality follows the visual. Math is in the back seat. Sorry. Math is in the back seat. But we'll leave math on the board for now because this is really a big game. It's really a big game. So, what is the intelligence that Hal Hool was able to introduce into his study with perception rather than math? What was he able to work with? This white disk is going to represent language intelligence. So, he had a combination of perceptual intelligence combined with linguistical intelligence. In other words, he would study and he would apply words to his study. For example, offset, uh, 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 you know, aiming away from center, and such. So he, he developed words to describe what he was doing. You know, pivot. These are words that are specific to center to edge aiming. So he didn't bother with the math formula. I think he understood very quickly that that would be uh, perhaps an impossibility or uh, certainly an improbability, but he didn't care. He, he wanted to know how to aim. That's a perceptual, linguistical endeavor. So, you know, 150 years after this game started, and after players were just knocking balls around, a fellow came along and he decided he wasn't going to be a noser. He didn't want to be a noser. He dared to be different. He dared to explore. Some of the nosers didn't like it. They ridiculed him. So, oh, he's not going to put his nose behind the center of the cue ball. Oh, magic. Oh, that's a cult. He's got his nose away from center. How, how dare this guy do this? He can't upset our mathematical apple, apple cart to where you can line up center to center and you can draw it on a piece of paper. He can't do that to us. Where are the nosers? Nosers, we've got to hate what this guy's doing. We've got to get together and hate it because it can't happen. There's no, there's no math that could, that could occur from an offset. That's an impossibility. And, and let's say that there is some math that can occur from an offset. What would happen to us nosers? Then we wouldn't be relevant anymore if something were to come along that would mess us up. We're the nosers. Well, something did come along. Something did come along. Something was discovered, not with the eyes behind center, but with the eyes away from center. That would allow a player to pocket balls from a known visual with a known center and to do so from various angles like I just demonstrated. So here's what it, here's what it boils down to. Perception, perception is a king when it comes to pool. Math is technically not even on the board when it comes to explaining how to really play. At least at this juncture, it's not even on the board. If you're going down the road, math would have to be in the back seat. 
perception and language would be in the front seat. You know, if you're studying perception, it is a known fact that language emerges often before math does. So, the study of perception is what I've been engaged in for the last 10 years so I could put it into language. Now, what this all boils down to is uh, the fact that perception must occur for center-to-edge aiming before math can do its job. And I'm sure it can be done. There can be a world-class perceptual team with some mathematical experts aboard that can unlock what I'm going to present. But if someone were to say, you've got this centered edge aiming system, then if you can't explain why, then you've got a fault with what you're doing. If you can't explain the why, well, the why hasn't emerged yet. This variable has not emerged yet for the game of pool. What has emerged is the how to do the perceptual. How to do the perceptual and align to the center of the cue ball as represented by this one line. And you know what? That's what I'm concerned about is the how. I'm not worried about the why. I've made an important step forward with my work that I'm going to present to the world and it's going to be the how to. Someone else can come along and add the math. The perception and the language had to come first. So if somebody asked me to explain the why, which is ultimately going to be a demand for the math, the why, I have no why at this point for why essentially two, three perceptions can make all zillion shots on the surface, or 5,000 surface, 5,000 inch, uh, 5,000 square inch playing surface of a four by nine table. I have no explanation for why. But what I do have is the very important how-to. And that's what my book's going to be about. I have, no, I have no proof for the why that would essentially lead us to the math. But what I do have is the how-to. I can explain the... Fortunately, language has words that can explain perception. You know, just because you take your nose away from the center of the cue ball, that doesn't mean you're void of any objectivity. You still have centers and edges and quarters to work with. So there's some intelligence there to be learned. So, the three shots that I made were all with a 15 inside by the same 15 perception as defined by two lines and they were all made with a center cue ball that I can teach to a group of people. So I just wanted to go through this. I thought, you know, I used to teach a little bit in elementary school and I'd use a little, use a few manipulatives sometimes when I teach. So I just, I just had the idea that I wanted to have something to refer to uh, in the way of some things that might help get the point across a little bit better than just sitting here and ranting. Um, I hope that this lesson can drive home the point of the concept or the idea in CTE of how versus why. It's very important that you understand the difference. I, I have, no, I make no bones about it. I haven't gone here, nor do I care to go here. I've spent 10 years right here where perception, I'm on the table where perception is king. 
That's perception is king. This is worth this chip's worth very little. You go to a pool game and you say, I know math. I know the mathematics behind the game. That's not going to carry too much weight. But if you walk into the pool room and you don't have to say a word and you've got strong perception, strong perceptual skills for playing the game, that's what matters. That's what makes the difference when you go into a pool game. It's your perceptual skills, then your, then your physical skills. The ability to explain it in words would be next. In math, is a, math would be fourth down the line. But it's coming someday. I'm going to wrap this up saying the how-to is important. And I think that 99.9999% of you out there are interested in this, not this. The one person that's in, or the, or the few people that are interested in this are naysayers and haters wanting to trap. Wanting to set a trap in some way. And I, I think, you know, I want to leave you with one word. I, I, say, I say naysayers, and what is a naysayer and a hater? What are naysayers and haters? They're quitters. They're quitters. They looked at Center Edge once upon a time. How, how long, I want everybody that knows of a naysayer or a hater, just asking your, ask yourself this question. How long do you think the head, head haters and, and the head naysayers spent on learning the perception of Senator Dave Jamie? I, I wouldn't be afraid to say that it's just a very little amount of time. I, a, a few hours at the very most. I, I'm, I don't even think I'm out on a limb by saying a good solid hour of work at a table. Could be, but... The point is, is that the ones that are naysayers and haters, in my mind, are quitters. I looked at Center Edge Aiming, and I didn't quit. I didn't quit. I have a quality about me that I refer to as being stick to I stuck with it through the ups and the downs, learning. It's been a tough journey, but I've reached the end of the road for my study with CTE, and consequently I'm very close to presenting to you uh, all the details of, of, of how you can pocket these nine balls that I just shot into that corner using 15 inside with a known center cue ball. Thank you very much for your attention.